Alright guys, we got John and Foos. <clears throat> so I'm an idiot and I accidentally did this entire breakdown without the screen capture going. So some of this guys I'm going to skip through. <coughs> Which I'm going to skip through this close guard portion of it. Uh, there's going to be one part here where John's legs are open like they are right now, Foos. Don't tunnel vision now on trying to get your knee over the top of his knee, like getting his knee pinned to the floor so you can slide your knee over the top. Um, just literally back out. Um, John's not even trying to like hold you in the guard. He's actively opening his guard so that he can maybe hopefully improve to a different guard. Just go for it, because there's nothing worse than being a closed guard. So just back out of this position, okay? Now you end up getting a cross face here, and you do end up pushing his knee down, just saying like you don't have to do that as soon as the legs are open start to back up because i'd hate for him to relock his legs and then it's just a whole ordeal again after that nice smash through very slowly you do well here smash through into side i'm gonna skip ahead on this guys because there's just some just a couple of key things you did right getting your points here good job john putting that back in <clears throat> Now, what I would have liked to have seen as soon as you hit here, cross face, this hand instead of grabbing here grabs the leg, either bottom leg or top leg, right? Because right now you have an opportunity because John regarded you to score another three foos. Um, but we just have to solidify position, right? <coughs> so, strong cross face with the right arm. Left arm here is either gonna grab this leg and start to lift, okay? Or you're going to grab top leg and start to pull so that you can get just like the warm-up drill. That's why I, I, I don't think you guys know how important that warm-up drill that we do is. Because this is the exact spot where John is right now. I'm grabbing top leg, using my left knee to pin behind the back of both of his with my shin capturing. And I'm going to the open side. Okay, so just something to think about in the future, guys. There you go, a good grab. Nice try with the step over choke. Now we're here. Then you guys fight off your knees for a while. Please don't fight off your knees. Guys, the rule on this, um, if bottom person is able to get up, um, then top person just goes down to their butt. Completely change positions, okay? Because um, I don't want to, you guys fight off the knees for like a good 20 seconds, which is kind of wasted training time, in my opinion. Foos ends it up on top, which would be two points for a takedown off of that. Not three because there's no guard pass. Side control is not points. Reset away from the wall. All right, now here's the other thing, John, that I really wanted to stress. Uh, you do this a lot, and you're not the only one. There's a lot of people in class that still do this a lot. Uh, you guys get your stiff arm frames, and then you basically hold on for dear life. So best case scenario when you guys do these kind of things is that there's no change of positions and that we stall out. And then worst case scenario is you tire out your arms. Um, they're just putting a lot of weight on you, and it's kind of delaying the inevitable. Okay, So if you can get a grip on this, John, and actively be shrimping the whole time, that's one thing. But if your hips are already killed, like you're unable to shrimp because there's a grip or something like that on them, um, this is not where I want to see the arm. I want to see your elbow underneath your body. So you can start to rotate up and win your middle back again, okay? Elbow underneath your body is always going to be a better spot than this, especially because at this point, you don't have to worry about the step over choke. And if you can beat him up to your side, you don't have to worry about this arm bar that he's trying to spin around for at that point, okay? So just a lot of stiff arming, a little bit too much stiff arming, John. Um, and I, like the previous breakdown that didn't get recorded, um, I, I'd like to see you because you're smaller and shorter, John. It's very, very easy for you, or should be very easy for you to actually use your elbows more effectively than most people because you can capitalize on smaller space. So you need to be using your elbows more to create those frames so that when you shrimp, you create holes big enough that you can actually capitalize in either getting guard back or making offensive positions. Like We got to use our elbows more and a lot less of your stiff arm with your arms. Also, as a shorter person going against bigger people in our gym, um, your stiff arm, a lot of the times their legs and hips are going to be so far away, it doesn't even matter. Um, so just work on changing up your frame structure uh, as you're grappling. Like this 
like this right here is just burning yourself out like even if you're preventing you're preventing yourself john from being able to rotate uh towards the screen at this point because you're using this arm now if it was this arm that you had the grip for grip with that's a completely different story but how can you get your elbow underneath you in order to rotate up in this direction if you're holding on with this grip you can't um so just something to think about <coughs> And if you want to kill this foos, don't even think about attacking the grip. Take your hand and put it directly underneath the uh, tricep right here, uh, relatively middle to close to the body. What little ability that uh, John would be able to use to rotate in this direction is completely nullified at that point. And then he's got to be worried about north-south choke and Kimura and near side elbow control and things like that. Okay? And it looked like you are thinking about it, and then you just say F it, and you start to isolate the arm here. Good. I don't want you to hang out here, Foos, unless you're going immediately for loop and guillotine. Um, and I still wouldn't be comfortable with you really going for that. So what I'd much rather see as soon as you hit this position, I want you up on your toes and I don't want your knees on the ground. I want you pulling backwards in this direction, trying to take the head to the floor so that you can spin around um, hip to hip. Okay. I don't want you hanging out here. Uh, you both in this match, especially starting right now, um, have a habit of hanging out in these positions way too long. Like, John does a good guard pull here. He's going to end up back up in the same exact position right here. John, immediately guard pull. You hang out here for another 10 or 15 seconds. Like, I don't want to see that from you guys because your head's not isolated. You've already isolated Fuse's hands. Just shoot that knee through. Get your guard pull. The longer you hang out here against better opponents, the more you're going to get yourself in trouble. Then this is the problem with having your knees so close, Fuse. Uh, if John's able to get a really good bite on this leg, that can be an issue going against other wrestlers. <coughs> or the Brothers Grimm, who have apparently zero wrestling experience, been wrestling for 20 years. And this is another spot where I'd like to see you get that elbow in between, work in the side control escape, or I'm sorry, the uh, mount escape, especially once you have quarter guard John. You get that elbow in between uh, your body and his knee, you shrimp your butt in that direction, there's nothing you can do to stop it. Uh, and, and you're fully guard recovered, even maybe into butterfly or uh, single leg X at that point. Because this is also a spot you holding on to this. Foos is already up points. Um, Foos could be actively trying to foot pummel at this point or looking to rotate body around to expose near side elbow. cross face as soon as you can on these spots foos <clears throat> i'd much rather see you um, focus on staying on top yeah you don't even need to address the grip if you get a strong ooh, careful with this uh, you get a strong cross face there you're good to go next time john why are we still holding on to that grip on his leg turn that into a spot where your elbow is the wedge and you're shrimping that gotta practice that mount excuse Please don't ever put your arm up there. <coughs> Sorry, guys. I got, I've had this cough for like the last three weeks. It's fantastic. Uh, I believe this is where it ends. So the essentially, guys, it's the last minute of this. John tries to fight for middle with his feet. Never quite gets it. Foose tries to isolate the arm. Never quite gets it. So this is the only other thing that I wanted to touch on in here. Something that I want everybody at the gym working on, uh, especially if you guys are getting to mount a lot. So I use this elbow to dictate how... I'm going to attack a mount, init mount initially, okay? So if his shoulder joint and elbow are up like this, then I get to decide, okay? So I'm either going to take my chest and bring it up really, really high, and then I'm going to settle my weight down, and I'm going to push against this lever right here. And that's going to collapse it to his body low. The lower I can collapse it, the more it's going to leave his neck open, and the harder it is for him to get his elbow and hand out of there. And you guys have all felt me do this, maybe not realizing what I'm doing. Now I'm explaining it, okay? So that's an easy way to trap his arms to his body. The next would be if we're in the same exact situation, and I can move my chest back this way, then down, and then pushing force this way so I can wedge his elbows towards his head with my body, okay? So in this situation, Foos, <coughs> 
before going through your whole gambit of attacks, I'd like you to see you just do one little extension with your body up here, drop the weight, and then use your chest and stomach to drag John's elbows even lower and trapping him to his body, okay? Um, let me just make sure, guys, I'm going to skip through, but I believe this is essentially the only other point I wanted to get in on this video. I still cannot believe I recorded or didn't record an entire breakdown. Yeesh. Let's see, boom, boom. That's a perfect time, by the way, to Ezekiel. That is the time to Ezekiel when you get the pummel. But yeah, good job, guys. On to the next.